Hey there, I'm Vanessa Bartlett and in recent times the word burnout unfortunately has become a lot more common. These days people feel like they're hitting the wall, getting tired and lethargic just with basic everyday activities, let alone if you are in the midst of something like full-blown adrenal fatigue like I was for two years as a busy fit personal trainer. I had to sometimes sleep for four hours a day after teaching two gym classes and as you can imagine it wasn't very good for my social, emotional or physical health at that time but it did push me into learning about burnout and my limitations and boundaries and these days I help people around the world overcome burnout and find balance within busy life to what suits their daily routine and what they value because the thing is you want to thrive in life you don't want to be hit with tiredness and feeling lethargic every single day which unfortunately is becoming more and more common so four of these pillars I'm going to go through today to help you identify perhaps what what might be pushing you into burnout and fatigue so a very simple way to look at these four key pillars is the self method and what we do is firstly look at stress then exercise lifestyle and food and if you can look at these four pillars within your own lifestyle and daily routine it can really help to firstly identify what might be causing your burnout but then give you some practical steps and solutions to then push through those so we're going to go into those a little bit today to help you out okay so first up identifying your stress now what does that mean? We have physical stress, emotional stress, uh, mental stress, and lots of things coming at us every single day. Why is that? Tasks are in increasing. We have to do more every single day than what we did 5, 10, 15 years ago. The demands that are placed on us from bosses, from workplaces, from family, friends, kids, and then compiling that with, say, social media demands and responding to emails, technology, Instagram, Facebook. There's a lot of stuff that we have to deal with on a daily basis. And the thing is, we all have a limit to that. We all have our capacity. And once you keep pushing past that capacity and your limit, that's when you hit burnout, where overwhelm can come about, mental health may drop. I know all too well about this going through fatigue and adrenal fatigue specifically for two years as a busy fit personal trainer when I was teaching up to 12 to 15 classes a week, overdoing it at the gym by far, but I thought that that's what you needed to do to be healthy and fit. Turns out that's not the case at all. So today I'm gonna to cover that for you as well. So looking at stress, how can we identify it? So we look at our physical stresses, we look at our emotional stresses, and of course our mental stress as well. So physically, what are you doing day to day that's perhaps exhausting your body? Are you in a physical, physically demanding job? Um, for example, I've had clients who are hairdressers or even builders, people who are doing a lot physically or on their feet all day long. That's quite different and a different energy output to say um, someone sitting at a desk. However, you can also get fatigue from that as well. But stress is coming back to the stressful demands placed on our body. So physical stress. So you're doing that, let's say you do have quite a physical job and then you're going out to exercise on top of that at the end of your work day, that might be a good thing. However, if you're feeling too lethargic and tired and adding more stress and load, then it's actually causing st more stress in your body rather than it being a help towards your health. Okay, we'll go into that a bit more. Looking at emotional stress, um, things like are we um, surrounded by emotional toxicity? Do we have a lot of stuff inside of us that is actually causing stress? Is your body in a state of stress because of emotional toxicity, because of perhaps mental health um, challenges, especially in the past year, right? We've all had these different challenges come up within our mental, physical, and emotional well-being, which can cause and trigger, tr trigger stress. So then what is stress? It's actually when your body goes into fight or flight. Now you would have heard this, the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is basically a physiological change in your body where your heart rate increases, your breathing increases, and your organs start to decrease their functionality in order for you to run from danger. That's the fight or flight response. You have the adrenaline hormone get released into your body um, through the adrenal glands right here, and cortisol levels increase as well. Okay, so at that point, it is absolutely necessary, and we do need cortisol, we do need the fight or flight response to run from danger, to have that ability to 
uh, react fast when we need to in our lives. However, unfortunately, according to Harvard Medical School, a lot of people are staying in this state of stress when they're sitting at their desk, for example. So why is that? It's because of these internal stress factors as well, not just the physical dangers like um, years ago. Okay, so looking at that and then looking at mitigating that fight or flight response, which we will go into as well, is really, really important. So what can you think of right now, perhaps, that is physically, emotionally, or mentally stressing you out? Perhaps jot them down right now. The next thing that we look at is exercise. So exercise is super important and in my journey in recovering from adrenal fatigue, this is something that was very high on my list being a personal trainer. And what I found was in having burnout and adrenal fatigue, every time I would try to do say a boxing class or something like a hit class or a circuit, you know, like a traditional um, workout that I was teaching for many years in the gym, I would kind of hit this wall, not only during the workout, so I could only last like 20 to 30 minutes as opposed to an hour, that was the first hurdle, the time factor. But then afterwards, I felt absolutely drained. Like again, to the point where I had to sleep two to four hours sometimes a day on top of my nighttime sleep just because I participated in exercise. And that was a big red flag for me going, hmm, something's not right here. If I'm in my late 20s um, doing these exercise classes, right, why aren't I feeling a buzz and an energizing kind of, you know, vibrance about me after doing exercise? Because that's what everyone else seemed to feel. So if you're like that, definitely go get a check with your doctor or your holistic practitioner to see how your adrenals are and there's different tests for that as well so exercise what you want to do if you're in burnout is actually bring your body into a moderate to low level of exercise so to compare here exercise high intensity exercise sessions would be your boxing you know running high intensity hit classes um, plyometrics, like a lot of jumping up and down, high impact, um, anything else like a lot of, you know, fast moving uh, Tybo classes, anything that's fast paced, gets your heart rate quite high and you're out of breath. Yes, that is definitely good when you are building fitness and you're healthy and you're working towards a fitness or a sports specific goal. However, in this case, if you're in burnout or fatigue, it is not ideal. Why? Because you're then going to push your body back into that fight or flight response, that stress response, trigger the hormones and the fight or flight response where your digestion decreases, your brain function actually decreases, and your body goes into that danger, that fight or flight quick response during exercise. So exercise in itself can be stress, okay? So if you are in burnout, it is best to do low impact, okay? Low impact, moderate exercise like Different forms of yoga. I wouldn't recommend Bikram yoga if you're in burnout because it's quite intensive in holding poses and things in a heated situation, which can cause stress for some people. Uh, different styles of Pilates. And look, this comes down to the style that you are doing in each discipline and the instructor and the environment. Different to home, different to a studio, different to um, a gym, for example. All of this contributes. However, the general rule is exercise wouldn't be going hardcore into HIIT classes and focusing on weight loss if you're in hardcore burnout. It's just not going to happen if until your body sorts itself out back into homeostasis, into the relaxation response, and we can deactivate this fight or flight response. So better off doing things like Pilates. That's what, pretty much what I got into during the fatigue. I was thinking, okay, these exercise classes like boxing and circuits are making me feel so tired and lethargic after, and I just had sore muscles all the time. By the way, I've got some articles on my blog which talk about how to identify workout burnout specifically. You want to head towards more body weight exercises, movements where you're controlling your muscles, learning to act with resistance against your own body weight rather than the use of weights, kettlebells, um, and other things like that at this point. Okay, remember we're talking about burnout, so that's the important thing. And then that way you'll find you can still maintain a healthy level of muscle strength, muscle tone, um, body shape, and general fitness 
without losing all of that if you're in burnout. So there's different stages. If There's four stages of adrenal fatigue. So if you are in the worst one where you're really exhausted in bed and daily function is hard, then I would only advise at that point very light stretching. Please send me a message if you need more guidance on this specifically. Then the next pillar we need to look at is lifestyle. So what does your day look like? What are you doing right now between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m.? And what would you ideally want to be doing? Now, it does come back to stress and down to commitments and things like that. But ideally, we want to create this daily routine or daily schedule that is functional and sustainable. The reason why people hit burnout and keep hitting the wall is because we're trying to cram too much in to our already full loaded schedule every single day. Right, And if you keep pushing that, if you keep going, mm, I could do just one more thing at 10 o'clock at night or one more thing, I can get up early at 5 a.m. And this is the contradiction, right? A lot of these people who are productivity um, experts and things like that might say to you, oh, look, just get up early to do a workout or get up earlier to do a bit on your business or get an extra work project done or, you know, things like that to fit more in today, in, into your day. That is all well and good. However, if you're in burnout, your cup is already full. You're already probably full to the brim where adding an extra task may be overwhelming, may cause you to, you know, kind of lose the plot. I know I definitely lose the plot when I'm already hitting that burnout point. And I'm going, mm, I've been really busy the last few weeks. If I add any more to my plate, I'm going to crumble, right? I'm going to hit that point. So if you kind of know, you've got to know what your red flags are. If you're trying to cram too much in your day, it's time to look back at your lifestyle, delegate and simplify. Be okay with delegating things. Be okay with simplifying your life. Simplify. So things like delegating food. Now, if you are super busy and you are finding that cooking is just A, you don't love it, B, it's causing a lot of stress every day and adding more tasks in when you're already really busy with your kids, your family work, perhaps for a couple of months or till you feel that you're ready, you can get some meal delivery services. I'm all for delegation. Find one in your area that is good. And look, they're not too, cost, um, not too costly these days anyway. So if you're on a budget, there are good cost-effective ways. And then you've got to weigh up as well. Well, what's, what's more important to you right now? If you're totally fatigued and in burnout, Delegate out your food. Delegate a cleaner perhaps once a fortnight, even once a month to, to do your house if that's what you need if you've got busy family and work life. What can you delegate out? What can you delegate in your work day? Perhaps you're taking on too much with work where it's causing you to burn out, whereas a couple of those activities could very well be delegated to someone else in your team at work, for example. So there's always a solution. So have that open mind to delegate and simplify your lifestyle. And then, of course, we look at food. The fourth pillar is food. Now, I always teach my clients, eat for energy. Eat foods which give you natural high energy, not false energy. So what do we mean by that? Um, you know, sugary drinks, um, caffeine. Look, I'm not against coffee. However, if you're in burnout or adrenal fatigue, wouldn't suggest you have lots of coffee. Um, if you want to really look at food and become intuitive with it, Look at how you feel two to three hours after you eat that meal. So intuitive eating. Intuitive. This is basically tuning in to how your body is responding to food. So if in two to three hours you are completely ready for bed or even half an hour after you eat, if you know that the food choice you made that day, perhaps takeaway or something quite heavy or got a lot of saturated fats or is oily or something like that, or too many carbohydrates, sometimes this can drain your energy, in which case you're gonna feel tired and lethargic pretty soon after. If that's the case, then the food choice quite simply wasn't right for you. It's not about going in to find the latest diet trends or food, you know, eating regimes. It's about tuning into what is working for your body. You know instinctively what foods you should and shouldn't eat based on how you feel. Are you bloated? Are you tired? Are you feeling quite light and energetic after your food choice? 
that was a good choice for that meal. Okay, so really tune into that. And then of course, having lots of water and hydration. Now in terms of that, sometimes if you need a bit of an extra kick, a good thing to do is have some extra electrolytes and water it down. So rather than a whole bottle of Gatorade, for example, which have electrolytes or Powerade, why don't you water it down and have maybe half that amount? So it just gives your water a bit of an extra kick um, without all the added sugar and things. So there's ways to work around that and it depends, of course, on your energy output, your work and your exercise regime and what point of burnout or adrenal fatigue you are actually in. Okay, so this is general advice I'm giving here, but basically these are the guidelines which I help my clients with. All right, so over the overview of this, the self method, looking at stress, how can we decrease that? Looking at exercise and choosing with respect to where you're at right now, perhaps the high level hit circuits or boot camps that you once did isn't right for you now isn't right for you at this moment in time. So another important point there is being okay with it. Acceptance, acceptance of where you're at is the key to all of this. Acceptance. If you can accept where you're at in burnout, in fatigue, and take a breath and go, okay, this is what I used to do five, two years ago, or perhaps, you know, before I had kids, I used to do X, Y, Z with my exercise uh, sessions, but now I'm struggling to do two push-ups, and I used to do 30, you know, that was quite easy. If you're comparing to what you did before, of course, use it as a benchmark to aim for, but be okay if you're not quite there right now. Everything is a phase, it can be worked on, but if you keep pushing through that, if you keep pushing all these different pillars and not looking at them uh, and not making room for adequate sleep in the lifestyle pillar as well, for example, if you're sleeping eight hours but you're getting up every two hours, that's not quality sleep, is it? So looking at ways to rectify that, having a nice bedtime routine in place, perhaps if your mind is very busy, having a little journal next to you and writing things down is really a great source of expending energy um, and stress for, from the day, right? So all these little hacks can be worked on pillar by pillar. And ultimately, if you consider these, you can then start to pull yourself back out of burnout and into a thriving, happy, healthy, balanced life, okay? So I hope this video is helpful today. Send me a message or anything at all if you wanna connect and ask any questions, we'd be happy to help you. See you next time.